So I've really done the impossible and I managed to get the attention of resident engineer Dan Hinch. He is in high demand tonight because you are the one that knows everything about this space. That is true. Um, so we're standing in the Supply Frame Design Lab in Pasadena and this is the grand opening. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about what it took to get to this point. Well, I, uh, I started here in mid-February and when I came to this facility, it was still empty. We had, the, we had the walls built, we had the floors in, we had the ceilings done, but we didn't have any equipment other than the Tormach, which is a PCNC 1100 CNC milling machine that was one third assembled. And we had our shop bot, uh, 9648 PRS Alpha, that was in a crate in the loading dock. So that was where this facility was in February. And I've gone basically over the course of the last three, four months, in assembling all the equipment, calibrating all the equipment, and getting it prepared for the residents that all start on July 1st. And so uh, this room that we're in right now, this seems like the 3D printing room. Can you tell us a little bit about how the different sections of uh, you know, engineering and manufacturing are broken up in this space? Sure, so we've got uh, a number of different sort of focal areas in the shop. We have this room that we're in right now, which is the rapid prototyping room. And this allows us to build uh, enclosures mm -hmm. uh, and and mechanical objects on a smaller scale but very very fast we have uh, electronics testing and assembly mm -hmm. so we've got soldering stations for hot air soldering irons we've got a refrigerator full of solder paste mm -hmm. uh, we've got a laser cutter right here so we can make our own capped on solder stencils uh, unfortunately we can't make our own metal stencils here we'll still have to use a service for that um, we've got some amazing Keysight oscilloscopes out here that we've got running right now. Um, we've got uh, power supplies and any number of different things that you need to be able to go from prototyping on a breadboard, if that's what you want to do, to uh, milling your own board out using an other mill with sure. PCB blanks, uh, to getting a design done on our CAD CAM stations to send out to, uh, to a fab, if that's what you need to do, right? Um, then we have the heavy equipment which is where the, mm -hmm. where the shop bot is, where the saw stop table saw is, where the, where the, uh, where the tour mock is. And that room is really for uh, building those, those, those production prototypes, where you've proved out your design, you've proved out your proof of concept with the other tools that we have, and now you're ready to start iterating on the final steps okay. to get you to manufacturing. Okay. Uh, so we are now with uh, Corey Grosser of Corey Grosser and Associates, and you and your team designed this amazing space. The first thing I have to apologize, this is not the best camera angle to show off the space, but it's because the place is loud, there's people everywhere, and this is the quietest place that we'd have. Um, but coming into this, what did you start with as far as the space goes? When you first walked into the space, what did you think about what you saw? Uh, I thought I had tons of potential. Very cool bow truss space. It was completely open. Uh, parts of it were raw, uh, and it's it's on an amazing has an amazing, you know, street facing storefront. So it was a great uh, pal. And so what you, I think is the the most visual um, in this space is these windows that you've set up in each room. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. So our concept basically was that uh, when you build stuff, when you're making things, it should be celebrated. So we had this idea of making as theater. So we wanted to set up kind of these like shadow boxes a little bit, uh, like these dioramas where people could kind of look from the outside and see what was happening uh, with the making on the inside. I think you succeeded at that greatly. Um, when you sit down to do design, uh, do you think about the type of people that are going to be in the space and what they're doing? Like what does that play into um, you know, the work that you're doing? Most architecture firms start from space planning. And space planning means that you start from a plan and how people will move around the space. We never start that way. We start experientially. So we start in 3D and we think about what the space is supposed to feel like before we, before we think about how the space is planned. So absolutely, it's really about use and feel. Like what are you supposed to feel like? What are you supposed to feel when you're inside the space? That, that's our start point. And then we do the space planning after that. I'm now talking to Alexander Bradich, who is the CTO of Supply Frame, and congratulations on opening the Supply Frame Design Lab tonight. It's a wonderful space, and I think what everyone's wondering is, what is Supply Frame's role with this space? What do you hope to accomplish, and what do you hope comes out of the Design Lab? All right. So I think originally the Design Lab really just came out of this, it, it came out as an initiative of engineers within the company. So a lot of us, I think the thematically why is this space like this and not you know like any other hackerspace is that a lot of us share a 
fascination with the MIT Media Lab. And so, as and frankly, a lot of us, you know, that would be the place that we would, you know, like to go to grad school, <laughs> and we just never got a chance. Uh, so, but it's, it's truly like, you know, that combination of hardware and design and art and just things like that and trying the impossible. So, you know, the, the, we started out with, you know, no master plan, but rather we just a pure desire to try to create a place where, you know, we, first of all, can, you know, can have fun. And the, the origins of this space were really in the hack lab, in the, just the hack lab, in the supply frame office. You know, we're a software company, but we're all really passionate about hardware. We had this, like, small room, and we were building hardware, and then, you know, we want something nicer. And then, as our appetites grew, we kind of ended up with, a, with, you know, this pretty big space. And then the mission evolved from us just having fun and, you know, doing the kind of stuff that we like to, you know, to kind of place where we can actually try to achieve something bigger, which is basically getting a lot of other people, the kind of people that we, re that we really admire, to have fun with us and mm -hmm. kind of create things. So, so in terms of what is supply frame expecting from this, it's really, in my mind, it would be testing the frontiers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, any kinds of frontiers. So, you know, the reason the place is nice and designed is that we break one barrier, which is trying to attract the kind of people that we all admire, like I really admire like industrial designers and I have no clue how to do things that they do. And I believe that, you know, it's nice to lay out a board that's super functional, but you know, once you put it in a, you know, an enclosure that's incredibly functional and people can start playing with it, that unlocks a lot of creativity. So the first bar is, you know, step one, make a wonderful space so that people don't have an excuse to be in it. And then, and kind of the next step is going to be, okay, well, let's see what the kind of pro projects we can get in here. Yeah, so I think, you know, attracting that talent and attracting people that can use an amazing space like this is the difficult part. And, and um, well, you've come up with this, this wonderful program for residencies. How did that uh, become the plan? How did that come to fruition? Yeah, so, so you know, originally it was, it, from the beginning, it was more meant like a, like a social club. And it's like, okay, we're going to go and hang out there and we need to have an espresso machine and all the stuff that you want to have in a hacker space. But then... As we started thinking about this, the big challenge that we've been, you know, seeing in, in our hacker spaces is that not enough, you know, there's all this talk about, you know, like the maker movement and all these magical things that are going to happen. The reality is that not enough stuff is happening relative to the amount of, you know, creative potential that sits in all these places. So, so we were thinking about, okay, well, you know, is there another way to organize this that is just going to make people, you know, get, make people on the hook for, for doing things, and you know, at the time, we were at a Shenzhen at um, no Shenzhen, the the Shanghai at Shenzhen, uh, which is like a hackerspace over there. And then um, we talked with people running the space. Uh, David Lee was, was was the guy that we talked to, and he said what they had as a part of their hackerspace was there was a monthly art show, and, and so like every month they would put out an art show, and then if you're working on a project in a hackerspace, you have to exhibit in that month, and that just some sort of a deadline for people suddenly made everyone, you know, work all night together. It's just, it's a forcing function for people to finish their stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it really worked great. And they would have these shows and, and so many creative things came out of that hackerspace because there was, you know, there were, there were some goals. So, you know, we started thinking about an art show as a kind of initial concept. And then Sophie kind of joined in and she comes from an art world and there's a notion of residences there as a kind of a natural way of doing things. And then eventually we kind of figured out that is that, okay, well, great. The you know couple of months should be enough time if you're coming with a with just an idea to develop into the concept if you're coming into concept to take it to the next level so you know that's that's eventually how we settled on this format but the most important thing for this space is that there are always projects you know mm -hmm. so it's you can hang around but it it should always be even if you're hanging around we're hanging around as a part of this project that has to be you know converged in some way in four months three, four months. Yeah. Like, there has to be some concrete deliverable, first of all, for ourselves, so that we feel great about what we accomplished, and we'll see how it works out. I don't know if people are going to enjoy that, you know, accelerated pace, but, uh, you know, we'll see. You know, I think the concept is there. I think the space is amazing, and the tools really are enabling for people to get that extra, that last 10% in their product or their art installation. Um, so, it, it's an amazing initiative. Thank you for making it a priority of Supply Frame, and thank you for talking to us today. Thanks.